Good morning nerds. Today we're going to continue our work on solving linear equations and rearranging by moving on to equations that have pronumerals on both sides of the equation. First of all, a quick little piece of revision of the type of equations we looked at last lesson. We've got here 2 outside of 3x minus 4 equals 11. Now there's sort of two ways that you could approach this. You could, first of all, and I'm going to do these, um, I know I showed you three ways to rearrange last lesson, I'm going to do all of these examples the first way. Um, first of all, you could take the 2 over, uh, because it's outside of the bracket and numerically sort of furthest away from the x. So we can go 3x minus 4 equals 11 over 2, uh, which is... Five and a half. Okay, now we've got minus four, we can take that over and that becomes 5.5 plus four, which is nine and a half. And then the times by three can go over as divide by three. X equals nine and a half over three. And we don't normally write our fractions with decimals inside of them as a convention. It's just a bit messy. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by 2 and get 19 over 6. So you could do it this way by taking the 2 over first. Or you could take uh, the bracket and expand it first. So let's write it out here again. Right, and remember we had that lesson where we put our rainbows in to expand the brackets. So 2 times 3x will give us 6x, and 2 times negative 4 will give us 8, and positive times negative is a negative, equals 11. Okay, now the negative 8 can go over, so we get 6x equals 11 plus 8, 6x equals 19, times 6 goes over as divide by 6, and we get x equals 19 over 6. Does it matter which way you do it? No, not really. What matters is that you follow the correct algebraic conventions with um, following the appropriate steps, and as you take things over, making them the opposite operation. Um, okay, so I wanted to show you that first quickly as a bit of a revision and because I know one of the problem solving questions asked you to do it this way um, instead of doing it this way like the rest of the chapter does it. So hopefully that cleared up a few of the questions you have. Okay, moving on to the questions for today. Um, you can see here that the difference between the equations we've got... Um, Oh, actually, that's for the next one. Never mind. Let's just uh, go through this. So we've got one x here and another x here all on the same side. Now, that's a little bit different compared to what we did um, last time. So we'll expand this bracket out first. 2 times x is 2x. Cross that off. 2 times 3 is 6. Cross that off. Now, we haven't done anything with the negative 4x here, so just leave it there. Just like we haven't done anything with the 8, leave it there. So by expanding this now, we can collect like terms in order to reduce this down to only having the pronumeral appear once. So 2x take 4x is going to give us negative 2x. Cross those out so we know what we've used already. And we have a plus 6 left and an equals 8 left. So now we've only got one unknown, and our process to solve these linear equations is to get the unknown on its own. So now that we've only got one, we're able to engage with our regular process. So now we've got negative 2x equals 8, and we'll take the positive 6 over as negative 6, which gives us negative 2x equals 2 times negative 2 comes over as divide by negative 2, and we get x equals negative 2 on 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. 
So initially this might have been a little bit um, confusing because you would have looked at it and gone, oh no, there's two x's, what do we do? Well, we have to collect those like terms in order to reduce it down so that there's only one and then we can solve it. Okay, now here, these last two examples are what the chapter we're working on today is about, where the, there's not only more than one pronumeral, but they're on opposite sides of the bracket. And the process here is um, exactly the same as the example I just showed you with more than one x. We still collect like terms and we still um, apply our regular rules of doing the opposite operation on the other side of the equality symbol. So what we want to do here is we want to have a look at the terms we've got. This is 5x, so it's an x term. This is 3x, so it's an x term. But this term here is just a constant, and this term here is a constant. So what we want to do is we want to put the terms that are the same on the same sides of the bracket. So we, on the left-hand side, we've already got a 5x, so we'll just leave it there. This 3x on the right-hand side, we want to put with the 5x, so we'll take it over and make it negative 3x. Okay, now, um, on this side we've got a negative 2, so we'll take it over and make it a positive 2, and the negative 4 is already on this side, so we'll leave it there where it is. So now we collect our like terms. 5x take 3x is going to be 2x, and 2 take 4 is going to be negative 2. Times 2 becomes divide by 2, and we get x equals negative 2 on 2, and that's negative 1 again, like it was in the previous question. So when you've got the pronumeral on both sides of the equation, really that's the process. I like to colour everything like this so that I can see where my different terms are, and then make sure I put all the same colours on the same side. So moving on to example D here, I've now got some brackets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand those brackets first with my rainbows. So let's go through that. 3 times 2x is going to be 6x. And 3 times 4 is going to be 12. So that's those two. Now on the right hand side here, we've got 8 times x, which will be 8x. <coughs> Excuse me. And 8 times 1 will be uh, plus 8. And so now we go on through and colour it like we did before. We've got 6x here, we've got an 8x here, there's my x terms. We've got a plus 12, that's a constant term, and a plus 8, that's a constant term. So 6x is already on the left hand side here, we'll leave it where it is. 8x is on the right hand side, we'll have to make it negative, so minus 8x on the other side there. Equals plus 12 is going to come over this side as negative 12, and plus 8 is already here, so we'll leave it alone. So this gives us uh, 6x minus uh, 8x, which is going to be uh, negative 2x, and we've got negative 12 plus 8, which is going to be uh, negative 4. Uh, just to show you that quickly, we're all the way down here at negative 12 on the number line. We're going to add 8. Adding is going this way, so we're going to end up here at 4 just to do a quick little bit of negative numbers revision while we're at it. Okay, so now we've got negative 2x equals negative 4. We can multiply through by negative 1 to make it 2x equals negative 4. Oops, sorry, 2x equals 4. Um, so x equals 4 times 2 comes over as divide by 2 x equals 4 on 2, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. And I've just noticed I've had this step here in red, which is probably a bit confusing, so let's fix that up. There we go. Um, okay, so 
Really, that's the process. We use our rainbow strategy. We learned a few lessons ago here to expand our brackets. And then I like to use colors here to help me see where my different terms are. And then we collect the like terms underneath. Now you don't always have to use these colors. I use colors initially to show you what's going on and you might like to do the same in your work initially to help you find and collect everything. But after a little while, you'll just be able to work through this and it'll, it'll sort of click for you and you'll see what you need and how you need to move it around. So I hope that was helpful. Have a good day. See you guys soon.